Hello friends, it's Mike DeMeo. I'm back for another Dhamma discussion. And tonight I just wanted to talk to you about the importance of studying the suttas and the Vinaya. Um, first off, I wanted to mention that at the first Buddhist council after the Buddha's death, Venerable Ananda, one of the Buddha's closest disciples, recited the suttas and Venerable Upali, another close disciple of the Buddha, recited the Vinaya. And so the suttas and Vinaya were recited at the first Buddhist council after the Buddha's death. Now, you know, in many places in the world, especially in Burma, when monks teach meditation, they teach based on the Abhidhamma, which is the third uh, book or collection in the Tipitaka, which is the suttas, the Vinaya, and the Abhidhamma all together. But, um, <clears throat> you know, many scholars and monks alike have studied the suttas, the Vinaya, and the Abhidhamma, and from their analysis, uh, and some monks who have done this analysis on the Tipitaka are, you know, the late Bhante Punaji Mahatera, uh, Ajahn Brahmavamso, or Ajahn Brahm for short, uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi, uh, Bhante Sujato, Tani Saro Bhikkhu, and all of these monks have attested to the authenticity of the suttas and vinaya and have attested to the fact that these that the suttas and the vinaya are likely the buddha's actual words and original teachings from 2600 years ago while the abhidhamma which again many burmese monks will teach meditation based on the abhidhamma rather than the suttas uh these monks that I just mentioned have attested to the fact that the Abhidhamma came later on, well after the Buddha's death, and that the Abhidhamma was not recited at all at the first Buddhist council after the Buddha's death. There was no mention at all of the Abhidhamma at the first Buddhist council. So these scholars and monks alike have attested to that reality and that is one of the things that I wanted to point out in this in this talk is that you know it's it's important to always go back to the source um, you know the original source when you're studying any religion you know um, uh, I, I guess you could say that for when you're studying any religion you know Christians read the Bible uh, you know, Muslims read the Quran, and this is another thing I wanted to point out, you know, Christians read the Bible. I grew up in a Christian household, and, you know, going to church when I was young, you know, before I became a Buddhist, before I converted to Buddhism, um, and I was going to church when I was a Christian as a kid, we were made to study the Bible, you know, at least to an extent. You know, so Christians study the Bible, and uh, Muslims study the Quran, and Jews study the Torah, and uh, I know that Hindus, you know, um, oftentimes will read the Bhagavad Gita and other, you know, uh, Vedic texts. And so, what I wanted to mention is that. You know, I, I'm I'm no longer a Christian. I converted to Buddhism when I was 18 years old, because uh, I studied the Bible and you know I studied you know all the different aspects of Christianity and all the beliefs of Christianity and delving deeper into Christianity um, and Christian theology. I decided that I did not agree with Christianity or Christian theology, and so um, I was studying other religions. I was an atheist for a while, and then I was studying other religions, and then. I read the Four Noble Truths on the internet and I converted to Buddhism immediately after reading the Four Noble Truths on the internet. So, um, 
this is what I wanted to point out real quick is that, you know, Christians have the Bible, they study the Bible, Muslims study the Quran, Jews study the Torah, Hindus study the Bhagavad Gita and Vedic texts. So all these different religions study these ancient texts that are, you know, supposed to be the original source of their religion and religious beliefs. But we, the Buddhists, don't really study the suttas or the Vinaya. We don't study these things. You'll see this in many parts of the world where Buddhists just go to the temple for pujas or they, you know, don't practice meditation or they, um, you know, don't have any knowledge of the suttas or the Vinaya. And it's very important for us as Buddhists to know who the Buddha was, what his attainments were, you know. Um, we need to know about his life and his teachings. And so the way to do this is to study the suttas and the Vinaya. And we can learn a lot about the Buddha and his teachings and his attainments from the suttas and the Vinaya um, and what is expected of us as um, Dhamma practitioners if we want to practice the Dhamma the right way. Um, you know, and what is expected of monks by studying the suttas and the Vinaya. So, you know, a lot of times people will study the Abhidhamma and, you know, in Burma they study and practice meditation based on the Abhidhamma and Visuddhi Magga, uh, which is a commentary that is by Buddha Gosa. And the Visuddhi Magga came even later on than the Abhidhamma, uh, well after even the Abhidhamma. So it, that's way later on after the Buddha's death. And, you know, there are scholars have and, and monks alike have pointed out that there are several mistakes in the Abhidhamma and Visuddhi Magga in terms of their attempt to interpret the suttas and the Vinaya. And so <clears throat> this is why it's important to study the suttas and the Vinaya is because, you know, a lot of times when we just practice, you know, like a lot of people, I myself started out in the Mahasi Sayadaw school of meditation. Mahasi Sayadaw was a, um, was a, was a famous Burmese monk and he taught meditation based on the Abhidhamma. And, you know, what they taught me when I was learning Mahasi Sayadaw's technique of meditation, what the Burmese monks teaching me taught me was this thing, you know, uh, called Vipassana that they, you know, taught me this kind of meditation um, that Mahasi Sayadaw taught called Vipassana meditation, quote unquote. And, um, you know, there was uh, a lot of dry insight involved. You know, they would teach me to note everything, seeing, 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 standing, 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 sitting, 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 you know, eating, 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 chewing, chewing, swallowing, swallowing, you know, hearing, hearing all that stuff, like literally noting everything. And um, they said that by doing this, you can gain insight into the nature of impermanence, anicca. So, um, however, if you read the suttas, again, this is, you know, these are the Buddha's actual words and original teachings from 2,600 years ago, the suttas. If you read the suttas, you can see that the Buddha never talks about vipassana being a method. He never talks about this technique known as vipassana meditation or this kind of meditation known as vipassana meditation. You know, there is no insight meditation. There is no vipassana meditation according to the Buddha and the suttas. What the Buddha does make, or um, you know, w excuse me, what the Buddha does uh, consistently make a reference to in the suttas is this thing called jhana, uh, that's spelled J-H-A-N-A, -A, jhana, and there are four jhanas. And what the Buddha says um, in the suttas is that when you attain the four jhanas, vipassana or insight comes from attaining the jhanas. So you practice to attain the jhanas and you gain vipassana or insight from attaining the jhanas. And so this is, again, why it's important to study the suttas. Uh, 
when you study the suttas again, you, you see that vipassana is not a method of meditation. It's insight that you gain from attaining the jhanas in meditation. And the Buddha teaches to attain the four jhanas. So you gain vipassana or insight from attaining the jhanas. And you would only know this from reading and studying the suttas. And you would also understand from studying the suttas and the vinaya what is expected of... Excuse me. Um, sorry. I apologize. My nose is really itching. Excuse me. As I was saying, um, what you also understand if you read the suttas in the Vinaya, if you study the suttas in the Vinaya, what you what you can understand is that, you know, there are rules for monastics. You know, especially if you read the Vinaya, you can understand that there are rules in place for monastics and you can see which monastics are following the rules and which ones are breaking the rules. And, you know, if you study the suttas, you can also find the right teachers to teach you meditation, to teach you about the Buddhist teachings. You know, um, not all teachers are the same whether they're monks or lay people not all teachers are the same and you know my teacher again is a lay person his name is uh robert and he's a lay person and he you know is very into the thai forest tradition and the suttas and jhana and um you know he's a great teacher and he's a lay person you know he's not a monk he's a lay person but it, it doesn't matter you know he's a great teacher because he studies the Buddha's original teachings and the suttas and he teaches based on the suttas and based on what he's learned from the masters of the Thai forest tradition which you know the Thai forest tradition is also inspired by the suttas and the Vinaya and so um, it, it's very important if we the Buddhists want to know about how to practice the teachings of the Buddha, we need to go to the source. Again, other religions like Islam and Christianity and Hinduism have their ancient texts and ancient books and holy books and scriptures that they go to and they know about their religion. They know who the central figures of their religion you know, are and what their religion teaches. And how to practice their religion according to these ancient scriptures these holy scriptures that they have we the buddhists seldom know about the suttas and the vinaya or have extensively studied the suttas and the vinaya i know very very few buddhists uh, other buddhists i know very few other buddhists who have studied the suttas and the vinaya extensively um, or even aware of the Buddha's original teachings in the suttas and the Vinaya so it's very important that we go to the original source uh, the Buddha's actual words and original teachings from 2600 years ago which are the suttas and the Vinaya um, you know the Abhidhamma and Visuddhimagga are great and there are a lot of Burmese monks and Sri Lankan monks and other monks you know and, and lay teachers who teach be who teach based on the um, who teach based on the Visuddhimagga and the Abhidhamma but again as I mentioned earlier scholars have pointed out that there are several you know when they've compared the uh, the Visuddhimagga and the Abhidhamma to the suttas uh, and Vinaya, they have found many mistakes in the Abhidhamma and Visuddhimagga and other commentaries, uh, you know, and this is why, again, it's, it's very important to study the suttas and the Vinaya so that we can have a clear understanding of who the Buddha was, what his teachings were, what his actual teachings were, and how to practice his teachings correctly. 
um, you know, practices, teachings which lead to awakening. Uh, we need to study his original teachings in the suttas and the vinaya to understand these things. And, um, you know, I wanted to mention also quickly that um, when you read and study the suttas and the vinaya, at least on my part, there are was no question when I read the suttas and the Vinaya, there was no question that the Buddha was a real person, that he was a real human being, that he was really awakened, really enlightened, and that he really did this. He really became awakened through his own efforts. There was no question in my mind when I read the suttas, when I studied the suttas, when I studied the Vinaya, you know, there was no question. Uh, faith arose in me, and that is why it's so important, again, this is another reason why it's so important to study the suttas and the Vinaya. When you go around to different temples and monasteries, and, you know, you're running into bad monks or bad teachers, you know, who are not following the rules or not teaching effective methods of meditation or not teaching the correct kind of meditation, you can always refer back to the suttas and the vinaya and there will be no doubt in you. All the doubt that you have will fade away when you go back to the suttas and the vinaya. And, uh, this is something that has sustained me for so many years. In the seven and a half years that I've been practicing the Dhamma, this is something that has sustained me this whole time is the suttas and the vinaya. And they've always been my guide. The suttas have always been my guide. When I've had questions that I couldn't get answered, that I when, when I was looking for the right way to practice meditation, when I was looking for, you know, answers to questions I had, um, and no one was there to teach me. I always referred back to the suttas, and that is what sustained me and gave me answers to my questions. So, um, in order for us as Buddhists to really commit ourselves to the Buddhist path and really commit ourselves to the original, actual teachings of the Buddha, you know, um, teachings that lead to awakening, that lead to uh, Nibbana or complete enlightenment and freedom from samsara and all suffering, we need to go back to the original source. We need to go back to the suttas and study the suttas and the vinaya. So uh, thank you for joining me for this video, for this Dhamma talk. And um, I'm going to put some information in uh, the description below this video. And uh, as you guys may know, as I've mentioned before, I am planning to, um, excuse me, I am planning to ordain as a Buddhist monk in the near future. And my idea is to go to Sri Lanka and ordain there. Um, I've decided that I want to be a monk in Sri Lanka. And so I'm going to put my information at the bottom of this video so that, you know, if you, any of you guys decide that you want to donate towards my travel expenses to Sri Lanka to help me become a monk there, uh, you can do so. So thank you and I'll see you next time.